All right, guys. Uh, so this is going to be um, uh, a quick video uh, going over uh, quantum numbers. Okay, so how to assign quantum numbers for an electron, the four different quantum numbers that describe the position of um, an electron. Um, and uh, so we're going over 3-3, um, VLO 3-3. Um, in, in terms of quantum numbers. So before you watch the rest of this video, you might want to review a few of the notes that you've seen in class. Um, so let me show you what notes those are. Um, but uh, you might want to read through those uh, and make sure you kind of understand that stuff. And again, that'll help make you understand uh, the quantum numbers a little bit better. All right, so let me show you those handouts first and then we'll get into uh, the quantum numbers lesson. Um, all right. So uh, the first one is uh, the electron configuration notes. So, you know, make sure you understand how to do this, how you make an electron configuration. So like our example here, uh, this is the element arsenic and this is its electron configuration. So kind of make sure you under have a good understanding of what each thing represents there. Um, but, uh, or an off-bell diagram or orbital diagram. So you want to check out these notes as well. So, um, you know, make sure you kind of understand how to turn an electron configuration into an orbital diagram, which looks like this, or an off-bell diagram, which looks like this, very similar. Um, notice, like, this is the off-bell diagram for nitrogen. This is the orbital filling diagram for nitrogen. Kind of understand what a box is what the arrow represents, the up arrow versus the down arrow, all that stuff. Um, so again, you want to review that stuff. Uh, make sure you understand the basic idea of the quantum mechanical model, as in where electrons are. So in the quantum me uh, mechanical model, we say electrons are in energy levels, and the energy levels are you know around the nucleus. And the higher the energy level, uh, the further away, on average, that electron is from the nucleus. Uh, but within these energy levels, we have sublevels. Now, really what the sublevels are, are the orbital shapes. Uh, so we call these orbital shapes, or we call these sublevels uh, S, P, D, and F. So we have our energy levels, and then we have our sublevels. And then within the sublevels, we have the different orbitals. Um, where, And then within those orbitals, um, we have the electron, right? And the way we represent uh, an orbital in an energy diagram or a, a orbital filling diagram, let me go to that, is the orbital represents a box and the arrow represents the electron, right? So you got your up spin electron and you have your down spin electron. Um, so electron configuration, orbital diagrams, up out diagrams, quantum numbers, uh, they're all, you know, ways of representing where the electrons are within an atom. Um, uh, and what quantum numbers are is to describe the position of a particular electron. So, like, here's the electron configuration for nitrogen. Here's its Oppel diagram, right? So, notice nitrogen has uh, seven total electrons, two plus two plus three right? Um, five of those, two plus three, are valence electrons. So here are the five valence electrons, right? And then here are its two core electrons that it has. And, you know, what the op diagram is kind of showing you the position of each one, right? So we got two electrons in the 1s orbital, two electrons in the 2s orbital. We got three electrons in the 2p orbitals, right? The p sublevel has three different orbitals. And uh, they're all ups, or they could all be downs here, but in order to be in that orbital, we have to have an upspin and a downspin, right? So an up arrow and a down arrow. So this is a way to represent, you know, where the electrons are, what's going on with the electrons. So you can kind of predict what might happen when this electron cloud bumps into that electron cloud, that kind of thing. All right. Now, what the quantum numbers are, are quantum numbers are a set of four numbers that describe the location of one electron. So if I wanted to describe this electron, right, uh, I'd have four things I'd have to tell you about, right? I'd have to tell you what energy level, what sublevel, uh, what orbital, and what spin it was, right? So it's, I know it's in energy level two, it's in sublevel P, 
it's in this box, this orbital, and it's the up arrow. So what the quantum numbers are, are a set of four numbers that describe each one of those things. So the first quantum number is energy level, the second quantum number is sublevel, the third quantum number is box or orbital, and the fourth uh, quantum number is telling me up spin or down spin, all right? Uh, so another thing you might wanna read over as you're watching this video or right before it is the quantum numbers quick guide, so it kind of tells you that. And then let's just dive into the quick uh, lesson here, all right? So the quantum numbers, uh, it's like, where's my electron? That's really what we're trying to figure out. So we have to understand the basics of the quantum mechanical model. Electrons are in energy levels. Within the energy levels, we have different sublevels. Now, really, we have different shapes of orbitals, but right now we'll just call that sublevel. So sublevel S, sublevel P, sublevel D, sublevel F. And then within the sublevels, we might have different orbitals. Now, in an S sublevel, there's only one orbital, but when you get to a P sublevel, there's three. And when you get to a D sublevel, there's five orbitals. And when you get to an F sublevel, there's uh, seven different orbitals. And then the electrons are in those orbitals, but they have a certain spin. Uh, and you can have two electrons per orbital, but one has to have up spin and the other has to have down spin. And in order to be in the same orbital, electrons have to have opposite spin. But those are the four pieces of information that would describe a particular electron within the structure of an atom. I wanna know what energy level it is, what sublevel it's in, which of the orbitals it's in, and then is it up spin or down spin, all right? So here's the electron configuration of nitrogen, 1s2, 2s2, 2p3, okay? Here's our orbital diagram, all right? So now we're saying, hey, we got two electrons in the energy level one, sublevel s. We have two electrons in energy level two, sublevel s. And we have three electrons uh, in energy level two, sublevel P, right? All right. So if you want to pinpoint one electron, okay, if you want to send an email to your friend, the electron, you got to know which electron you're sending it to. So you have to know those four things, right? So you got to know the energy level, you got to know the sublevel, the orbital, the spin. So what the four quantum numbers are is there's a quantum number for energy level, there's a quantum number for sublevel, there's a quantum number for orbital, and there's a quantum no, quantum number for spin. And if you know all four of those numbers, you can pinpoint the electron, right? You can, I'm talking about, right? I have like this electron has a set of four quantum numbers. This electron has a different set of four quantum numbers. So if I know those four quantum numbers, I might be talking about that electron or another set of four quantum numbers could describe this electron or that electron, okay? So those are what each quantum number represents, okay? So think of them as a set of coordinates, but you have to have four, all right? Now here are the symbols for the quantum numbers. So the first quantum number, N, that's energy level. L is sublevel. M sub L, M subscript L is orbital. And M subscript S is spin, okay? So we know what energy level is. It's, you know, energy level one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven. But what's L got to represent? Well, L is sublevel. So we know the sublevels in terms of letters, S, P, D, and F, but now we have to put numbers to those letters, okay? So L is going to represent, you know, if you're in sublevel S, sublevel uh, P, sublevel D, sublevel F. ML is the orbital. So ML is what box are you in, right? If you're thinking of an orbital diagram, the orbitals are represented by boxes. So ML is going to tell you which of those boxes the electron's in. And then there's got to be a number that tells me, is it the up arrow or is it the down arrow? And that's going to be your MS number. That's going to be your spin, okay? So let's go over what the different values can be for the different quantum numbers. So the first quantum number is just going to be a whole number. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven. Now you could have greater than that, but remember, uh, we want to marry this up to the periodic table. Um, so there's seven rows of the periodic table, and remember each row counts as the en an energy level. So uh, one through seven, so energy levels one to energy level seven. There is no half, like, so there's no 1.5, 2.6, that kind of thing. So you can be Energy principal energy level one, principal energy level two, principal energy level three, and so on. Okay, so that's what N is allowed to be, all right? 
So L is the quantum number for sublevel. So again, we know that so there's a sublevel S. And remember, how does that correspond to the periodic table? That's the S block. Then you have sublevel P, the P block, sublevel D, the D block, sublevel F, the F block. All right. But now we got to put numbers. So if L is zero, that's representing the S sublevel. If L equals one, that's representing the P sublevel. If L equals two, that's representing the D sublevel. And if L equals three, that's representing the F sublevel. So if your second quantum number is zero, then you know you're in sublevel S. If your second quantum number is two, you know you're in sublevel D, okay? All right. So ML, to, I'm gonna show you how to get the number for ML. But these are the allowed values, okay? These are what ML is allowed to be. Negative L to positive L. So what does that mean? Well, if L is zero, then what we're saying is ML is allowed to be negative zero to positive zero. So if L is equal to zero, if you're in sublevel S, then ML has to be zero. But if you're in sublevel P, if L equals one, then ML could be negative one, zero, positive one all right and just remember that if you're in sublevel s there's only one orbital there's only one box so we only need one um uh number so if you're in the s sublevel the orbital number is automatically zero but remember when you're in the p block when you're in a p sublevel you have three different boxes three different orbitals that the electrons can be so you need three different numbers and what those numbers are are negative one zero positive one so negative l to positive l so if Remember, if we're in the F sublevel, the F sublevel has seven different boxes. So I need seven different numbers. And those, those numbers would be negative three all the way to positive three with zero in the middle. So it would be negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, positive one, positive two, positive three. That's how, what ML is allowed to be. And I'll show you how you figure out which one it is. But that's what ML is allowed to be. Okay. So let's look at this, right? So if I'm in a P sublevel, this could be 2P, this could be 3P, this could be 4P. Every time you see a P sublevel, you know you're going to have three boxes. You're going to have three orbitals, right? So the sublevel number for P is 1. So these boxes are going to be negative 1, 0, positive 1, right? So here are the ML numbers for a P sublevel. The one furthest to the left is the negative. The one further to the right is the positive and zeros in the middle. So one way to do it is put a zero on the middle box and count negative this way and positive that way. Or just start out like if you know that P is one, if you know your L number, your sublevel number is one, then your boxes are negative one to positive one. All right. So a D sublevel, remember the, the sublevel number L for D is two. So it's going to be negative two all the way to positive two or zero in the middle, count negative to the left, positive to the right. So zero in the middle, negative one, negative two this way, one, two. So if I have an electron in this box, then my ML number, my third quantum number is going to be negative two. But if it's in this box, my third quantum number would be one. Okay. That's how the ML quantum number works. All right. And then the last quantum number is spin, and it, that's the easiest one. It's either up or down, but here's where you have to, you know, it's not, it, it's, it's positive one half or negative one half. So if you have the up spin electron, you got positive one half. And if you're down spin electron, you got negative one half. So if your MS number is positive one half, you know you're talking about the up arrow. But if you see a negative one half, we're talking about the down arrow, okay? So if I wanted the quantum numbers for this electron, right? The first quantum number would be energy level and I'm in energy level two, so I'd write two. So my first quantum number is two. The second quantum number is sublevel. I'm in sublevel P, so remember we call that one. So sublevel P gets the quantum number one. So my first quantum number is two. My second quantum number is one. And then my third number, quantum number is what box I'm in. Well. This would be negative one, this would be zero, this would be one, so I'm in box one. So again, it would be two, one, one for my third quantum number, 
And then my last quantum number would be negative one half because it's the down electron. So that would be the set of quantum numbers to describe that electron. Energy level two, sublevel P, box number one, so the one furthest to the right, negative one half. If that arrow, the negative arrow was here, then the only thing that would change is this one right here would turn into a zero because that's box zero. And if that electron was here instead, then this number would be a negative one because that's box negative one. Okay. So a lot of times it's kind of good to draw, you know, an off bow diagram. So you might want to map out a full off bow diagram, um, but put in the quantum numbers. So every time you see S put a zero below it to remind you, so that's energy level one. So N is al already written there. The first quantum number is already written as a number, but notice like S P D F, we don't have numbers there. So right below the S's, I'll put zeros. Right below the P's, I'll put ones to remind me that that's quantum number one for P sublevel. Right below the D's, I'll put two. And if I get to F, I'll put three. And then the boxes, right, all the S boxes get zero. So right below this box, I'll put a zero, I'll put a zero, I'll put a zero, I'll put a zero. Uh, here I'll go zero, negative one, one, zero, negative one, one, zero, negative one, one, and so on. And then this, you know, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. Here it would be negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. And just label the boxes. So like, I, I, I didn't do a full opt-out diagram, but this is what I mean. So like below each S, I put a zero. Uh, on the S box, the S orbital, I also put a zero to remind me that that's also zero. Here I put a, a two below the D, I put a one below each of the P's. I labeled the orbitals zero in the middle, negative to the left, positive to the right, okay? So let's do this quantum number, all right? Uh, the quant let's do the four quantum numbers for this electron here. So N is obviously four, I'm in energy level four, Sublevel F, so that would be three. So four, three, that would be box negative one, right? Negative three, negative two, negative one. And I got the up arrow, so my last quantum number would be positive one half. So let's see if we got it right. So energy level four, sublevel three, which is F, right? Box negative one, positive one half. So my coordinates, four, three, negative one, positive one half for that electron, okay? Another thing, you know, a couple, like if you really start to master what the, each quantum number represents and you understand how, you know, kind of the quantum model structure, you know that there is no energy level, there's no sublevel P in energy level one, right? Energy level one only has sublevel S. So if your first quantum number is one, your second quantum number can only be zero because there is no sublevel P, right? And, and uh, uh, sublevel, there is no sublevel P in the first energy level, right? But in energy level two, you have the S sublevel and you have the P sublevel, but you don't have a D sublevel, right? And so on. So just kind of knowing your limits there. So like, here's a, a question you might see, like what's wrong with this set of, of quantum numbers? So this is saying energy level two, sublevel two. So energy level two, sublevel D, box zero, positive one spin, uh, uh, po uh, up spin, right? So what's wrong with this? Well, I'm in energy level two, but it says sublevel D. Well, there is no D sublevel in energy level two. So this is an impossible set of quantum numbers because there is no energy level uh, or sublevel D. There are no D orbitals, no, no D sublevel in energy level two, okay? So like this would be an impossible set of quantum numbers. And then, you know, what are the quantum numbers for the valence electrons of calcium? So this is when you might want to write your electron configuration and look for the valence electrons. So there are the valence electrons, the two electrons in the 4S sublevel. And then you might want to write, represent that as an orbital diagram. And then all we have to do is come up with the set of quantum numbers for that electron and that electron. So 4, 0, 0, positive 1 half. And then this electron would be 4, 0, 0, negative 1 half. So those would be the set of quantum numbers for the two valence electrons of calcium, right? Okay. And then the other thing to understand about quantum numbers is 
if you know quantum numbers, then you really know the true poly exclusion principle. So we always say, or we, you know, we say the poly exclusion principle is in order to occupy the same orbital, or if you want to think about it in terms of boxes, in order to be in the same box, the electrons have to have, to have opposite spin. Now that's our normal interpretation of the poly exclusion principle, but what the poly exclusion principle really says is that no two sets of electrons, no two electrons in the atom can have the same identical set of quantum numbers. And so like if these were two up arrows, then they would have the identical set of quantum numbers. And that's impossible, you can't do that. So the only way you cannot have the identical set of quantum numbers is if in the same box, in the same orbital, electrons have to have opposite spin. So if you actually look up the true poly exclusion principle, it doesn't say electrons must have opposite spin to be in the same orbital. What it really says is that no two electrons in, an, in a single atom can have an identical set of quantum numbers. All right, does that make sense? All right, so anyway, that is a um, you know brief 20 minute quick lesson on quantum numbers. So hopefully, um, you know, we. We go over it in class, it sinks in, and if you need a little bit of extra help, hopefully this video kind of reaffirms your uh, knowledge on uh, quantum numbers, okay? And that's really all you're gonna need to do with it. Um, you know, you don't really use quantum numbers unless you decide to become a chemistry major in college and you take physical chemistry, you take PCAM. But until then, uh, you're probably never going to see quantum numbers again after this unit. Um, the main thing is really understanding electron configuration and uh, orbital diagrams and op-out diagrams and that kind of thing. But uh, the quantum numbers, it's, it's good to, you know, get a, a, you know, surface understanding of what they represent. So just in case you see them again down the road. All right.